Good morning, friends. Uh, it is Tuesday, the 13th of July, uh, and we are on... It would be, it'd be great if I could remember this every day, right? We are on mile 11, right? First Timothy 3, and our question says, what aspects of staying above reproach are most challenging for you as a follower of Jesus? Oh, we're going to get a little personal here today, friends. Let's see. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, I'm so thankful for this study. The Lord, that we can check our hearts and we can know how we are to be followers of you. Lord, we thank you for the word that you have given us, a guidance for our life, Lord, the script to follow. Lord, I ask today as we get into some, uh, some personal things, Lord, that you just are with us, that you guide us, Lord, and, and that you make the words that come out of my mouth today honoring and pleasing to you in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're looking at 1 Timothy 3 today. Um, so, you know, this is one of those passages that kind of gives you, uh, you know, the, uh, as Paul is telling Timothy some instructions for the church, right? Um, you know, Timothy, um, where, wherever Timothy is, right, it doesn't actually tell us um, where Timothy is whenever this letter is being written to him. There's speculation, of course, but um, you know, it doesn't exactly say where. But Paul is giving Timothy um, instructions on how the leadership of the church should be picked and how they, how they should act, right? So he starts off, the saying is true, or the saying is sure, sorry. Whoever aspires to the office of bishop desires a noble task. Now bishop must be above reproach. Okay, above reproach. That's the first requirement. Married only once. Temperate. Sensible. Respectable. Hospitable. An apt teacher. Not a drunkard. Not violent, but gentle not quarrelsome, and not a lover of money. He must manage his own house, his own household well, keeping his children submissive and respectful in every way. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may be puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace in the snare of the devil. Alright, so there's a lot of things in here, right? Um, but I think if we look at this list, most of them are common sense things, right? These are characteristics that we'd really want in any leadership, right? Um, anybody that, that has rule over, rule over us. Um, you know, whether it's a boss or a church leader, um, you know, things like um, above reproach, right? Um, which is our, our, you know, thought for the day. Um, you know, so being above the line, above the bar, right? Setting the high example. Married only once, you know? Um, we, we, we could go on with that, but uh, we'll, just, we'll just leave that one there. Um, temperate, right? Um, temperate's a good thing, right? Kind of even keeled, um, not flying off the handle. Sensible, right? Makes good choices, right? Things things that make sense, right? Sensible, um, not kind of out in left field. Respectable. Now there's a big one, right? Respectable, and that's something that that's worked on, right? Respect doesn't come naturally respect isn't is something that has to be earned um so in this case right a bishop then is somebody that has to be well established in order to be respectable and it talks about that a little bit later on of course whenever it says about um you know about being well thought of by outsiders and not being a new convert right there's all kind of play into that hospital or sorry all into that um respectable category hospitable um 
know, showing kindness towards others, uh, an apt teacher, right? Someone that's 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 good at giving the word or good at showing people how to do things. Um, not a drunkard. Okay, so um, that that that's a common sense one there. Um, that one's an easy one to explain, right? Um, then not violent but gentle, um, and not quarrelsome, kind of go hand in hand, right? And not a lover of money. Okay, so somebody that's not in it for the money. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we get a lot here in this list. Um, but let's go back to that above reproach, right? And that's our, our question for today, above reproach. So the question is, what, what do you struggle with, basically, um, to keep you above reproach? What's the one thing that really makes it a hard time to do that? Um, I'm one that angers fairly easy. Um, I, I generally don't show that. Um, but I'm driven to anger quite easily. Um, you know, especially whenever it's something that's like a personal attack kind of thing, or something that I feel you know, is against my person or my family. Um, I'm way too quick, way too quick to judge into anger. Um, that's what I struggle with, you know, keeping above approach. And I'm going to be you know, curious to see what all of you um, struggle with whenever we get to our Zoom session here in two days. Um, you know, and of course, you don't have to share um, if you don't want to. That's a, It's a personal thing. Um, I would never make anybody share anything that personal if they, if they didn't want to. Um, but it's interesting to see, you know, as a body of believers, the things that we struggle with and how we can help each other out um, and help get through those things, right? But that's the laundry list of things um, of, of how a bishop should be and how a bishop should act. Um, and, and then he gives us the same kind of list for deacons, right? Um, but I think it's kind of funny that the very first thing, um, deacons likewise, they must be serious, you know they they have to be have to be serious. Can't you know can't be telling jokes. No, I don't. I don't know, right? Uh, what does it, what does he mean by they have to be serious? You know, is that serious in their role? Right? Take take their role, their position seriously. Um, I, I kind of think that's where he's going with this. Um, and then the next one, not double tongued. Hey, okay, not double tongued. So um, say it to my face, not to my back. Right. Um, no talk behind people's backs. The next one, not be, uh, not indulging in much wine. Notice it says not much wine, right? Um, you can have some, just not, just not too much. Not greedy for money. Uh, they must hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience. Let them be first tested, then if they prove themselves blameless, let them serve as deacons. Women likewise must be serious. Not slanderers, but temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be married only once, and let the and let them manage their children and their households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and great boldness in the faith that is Jesus Christ. So I think that's fun that you know, both times for a bishop and for a deacon, um, Paul references you know, managing your household well. Okay, so you know it, it starts at home, right? Um, for bishops and deacons, and really for all of us, right? Our home life reflects who we are, how we treat our family, how we treat each other in our household. You know, that's kind of a snapshot into how we treat people in the bigger world. Right, if things are running smoothly at home, um, we're all going to be more, uh, or, or we're all going to have a lot of these other qualities that Paul is talking about. Right, when we're going to be less quarrelsome when things are things are running at home, um, running well in the household. Right, we're we're apt to be more of a people person, more hospitable. Right, uh, this list of things here that Paul has given us. So, friends, it starts at home. Right. If we can have these qualities and these characteristics in our household, 
with our family, then all these other things come into play. Um, you know, and like I said at the beginning, this isn't just a list for bishops and deacons, right? This is the list for all of us as bodies of, of, of as the body and believers of Christ, um, because essentially, as pro as professors of the faith, right, purveyors of the faith. Because um, that's what we're all called to do. We're all called to spread the word, right? To give the good news to all nations. So we're all essentially in a role of a bishop or a deacon or, or a pastor in one way or another. All right, so this list is, is for all of us, whether we're, <laughs> we're actually in ministry in term or not. Um, so some things to think about in there, right? And how those are affecting. Like I said, I can't wait to hear... To hear your responses uh, and then Paul wraps it up and says I hope to come to you soon but I'm writing these instructions so that if I'm delayed you may know one ought to be how one ought to behave in the household of God which is the church of the living God the pillar and bulwark of truth without any doubt the mystery of our religion is great he was revealed in flesh vindicated in spirit seen by angels proclaimed among Gentiles believed in throughout the world taken up in glory then friends that's where we leave it for today until we pick up our next mile tomorrow thanks for watching be blessed